Let's take a look at some of the fundamentals of security. One of the most important concepts in security is really understanding the security level. And unfortunately, this particular diagram is something that management often does not understand and grasp, yet this is one of the most important decisions management is going to make. And that is, the idea here is that if you want more security, you're going to have to spend more money. And the problem is, how do you define security? Most managers don't understand the difference between low level security and high level security, so let's go over some general guidelines. It's very easy to get caught up in the technology and things that are relevant, but let's really focus on what's really important. As we indicated before, it doesn't matter how powerful the lock is, where do you store the keys? That's one of the most important things in security. So even if you have the best security algorithms that you're using, if you don't have a security chip, then your system is going to be vulnerable. And it doesn't matter what technology you're using. One level above that is you can have what's called logical protection. There's a class of chips called Secure E Squared where you can store the key inside the chip. And the chip has logical protection. So what that means is that if you don't have physical access to the chip, if you only have access through the bus, that no matter how much you bang away on the bus and send signals to it and try to confuse it, you can't get the data out of the chip. However, if you had physical access to the chip and you broke the chip open for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, you can get the information out of the chip. So let's go to the next level, which is physical protection. There's a class of chips, and one is the board ID chip, and, and that falls into the same category as the smart cards, which is that even if you have physical access to the chip, even if you had a scanning electron microscope and a bunch of PhDs, you, and you hammered away at this chip, you still can't get the data out of it. And let me give you some examples of where that's used. In set-top boxes, in satellite TV, at one point, something like 50 or 70% of revenue was being pilfered by clones of set-top boxes grabbing cable and satellite subscriptions. And they started using smart cards, and that number went down significantly, certainly in the single digits, if not close to zero. The next level is system-level protection. And now we're talking about the plastic bag. The idea is that even if you have the key stored, and even if you have the best security technologies, you really have to understand, again, at a holistic level, what is particular to your particular design and system that needs to be secured. And so when a management comes in and thinks about their security level, how do they distinguish between logical protection and physical protection? Most of the folks don't really understand the difference between one technology and another. They're really choosing the cheapest technology. And one measure is what's called FIPS level certification. And this is something that is used in certain cases where where managers, people who are making decisions, want to make sure that a chip has a certain minimum level of physical protection. So for example, a secure E-square does not have FIPS level certification, whereas a board IT chip does as well as a smart card. And so unfortunately, we run into situations where we don't want to end up where our little friend is in the bottom right-hand corner, where we want a high level of security and we don't want to pay for it. And so the way we can achieve that is to sort of confuse the issue about what is the difference between one security chip and another? They're just secure. And the idea here is that they're very, very different. And the idea here is to understand what do we need to do to have enough information available to make the right decision. So let's take a look at uh, some of the vulnerabilities in more detail in Secure E Squared, again, to understand what's important about picking the right technology. So typically inside of Secure E Squared is going to be data and most importantly the keys and some kind of security logic. And so every chip has some kind, of, some kind of device or border around it. It's got a package that it's in. Well, it's not very difficult to break open the package. And when you do that, you can actually grab the keys out pretty easily. Um, the other idea is that in e squared chips is that they do have security logic. They have security algorithms that are running. And those security algorithms are typically proprietary. They typically have a low a number of bytes, a low number of uh, bits, low key strength. And um, those are typically not used in best-in-class security applications. In the case of a Bore ID chip or a smart card, something that has physical protection, as you can see, we put a layer on top of that chip. And so even if you broke open the chip, there's a foil, there's a, a physical barrier, and there's various other physical measures to prevent you from getting the data out of there. And in addition to that, in some of these higher-end chips, the security logic that's used uses standard algorithms, as opposed to proprietary algorithms, these are well-known security algorithms. They're using um, key strengths that are recommended by NIST, and they're using often asymmetrical algorithms, and we'll get into some detail about that. And the idea there is that 
we don't have a master key. With a lot of older algorithms, one key is present in all these chips. So you've got millions of chips out in the field, very similar to what happened in the DVD failures. You had lots of DVDs out there with one master key and all it took was one failure. Murphy's Law, if you have a million chips out in the field and you can break into these things, and if one of them creates a compromise, then the entire system is compromised. That's why DVD failures were so broad in scope. It was what's called a break once, fail everywhere scenario. So the idea is that if you don't invest or choose the right technology, if you were to pick, for example, a secure E-square technology and put a master key in there, you're going to have a negative return on investment. You're actually wasting your money because you're spending money on a security that really isn't secure because it's, you're focusing on the security technology as opposed to the security of the system. And I think people intuitively understand that. What's really happening here, it's a management issue. How do you get management to pay attention to what's really important in a very complex environment? And it turns out a lot of this is not complicated. The key issue here is to focus on what's important. So let's look at some failures. As I mentioned, DVD security failures, the master key was compromised. One vendor accidentally, or not accidentally, leaked the key out. And once one vendor leaked it out, everybody had it. The entire thing had a very large negative return on investment. Peripherals and medical devices have been cloned. A lot of networking equipment as well. A lot of clones have been coming off from offshore. And, and um, the reason is that the security level was not effective. There was no business case. So until people started getting cloned, people didn't start investing money in deploying security. There was no business case for it. Um, in addition, another major failure was the Boston MyFair system was hacked. Now, it turns out they made a conscious choice to use a lower grade security technology to lower their costs. And what actually happened in this case was there was a lot of publicity around this thing being hacked. Well, it turns out the hack wasn't quite that bad because it was not a scalable hack. You could hack into the system, but in order to take advantage of it, you would need a large piece of equipment to replicate these these tickets. And the idea there was, well, in the press it appears as though they got hacked, but it turns out their decision was not unreasonable. And so it really, you really need to focus on what is it about the security that is a problem? Is it the technology? Is it a system? And many times you make a conscious decision to spend a little bit of money on security for something that has a low value, and you make a conscious decision to spend more money on security for something that has a high value. So it's really important to really understand what is the true financial impact.